what is The Matrix. The Matrix, 1999, groundbreaking film, set the tone for everything to come for the next God knows how many years and still doing it. What is The Matrix Reloaded? The follow-up to The Matrix, a 15-minute film, actually, I'm sorry, like a three-hour film with about 15 minutes worth of actual real information and script and story that got filled with a bunch of superfluous, excessive bullet time sequences and action effects and all sorts of stuff that made the first one really cool. Uh, and then what is The Matrix Revolutions? The follow-up to Matrix Reloaded, the final one in the chapter in, in, in the series of three. Well, not really the end, but it was supposed to be. What is The Matrix Resurrections? Honestly, I have no idea. I saw it, and uh, we're going to talk about it next on That Guy Talks Movies, but, uh, you know, I, it, we, we got, we'll just get into it, all right? Next. Hey, welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. I am that guy that talks movies. And let's, uh, before I even get into this episode, let's do a quick programming note. Is it called a programming note? I guess it is a programming note. YouTube channel, uh, note to my subscribers and followers. I have been absent uh, for a month. I have not done a video since I think the Con Air video, which was a month ago. Um, I have just been behind in uh, my production schedule and just working with so many other things and dealing with my technology company and, and other things on top of which I ended up getting COVID. My wife got COVID. One of my children got COVID. Uh, it's been quite a ride. Uh, so like November itself was just a ride and I am back. I am feeling much better. Uh, uh, thank God that I got through it. My family got through it and we are fine. But um, I just wanted to share that with you and let you know that hopefully I can get back to a normal production schedule. But I have been absent and uh, I feel bad about that. So for the people that follow me, people that have subscribed and have wondered, hey, where did that guy that talks movies go? It's probably like two of you, but uh, I appreciate you nonetheless, whether it's two or a thousand or whatever it is. Um, Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet and you're catching this video for whatever reason, uh, I appreciate you being here. However, you ended up here through the YouTube algorithm. So do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I put up new content. Uh, and uh, let's get into it. The Matrix Resurrections. So let me let me start at the outset here with my general opinion. First of all, it's going to be a spoiler free um, review. I'm just going to talk about this. I got some notes here. I'm going to do the usual. You know, I'm going to try to look at my notes, but I'm probably going to freestyle this and fuck it up a little bit. But just just go with me. Let me first start by saying what I told a few of my friends already when they asked me, you know, friends who haven't seen it. Let me tell you what I told them when they asked me what I thought. I said, OK, it didn't suck. It wasn't a movie where you left angry, where you were angry and you just pissed off and it, you know it clearly sucked and everyone knew it sucked, right? But it was not a good film. So let me just put that at the outset. It was just, it was not good. It definitely wasn't great, wasn't good, but it didn't suck entirely. That's not really saying much, though, when you really think about it, just, you know, whatever. With that said, I'm going to continue. So this is a film meant to essentially resurrect a franchise and it spends most of the time reminiscing and regurgitating the first film, uh, the film that made it a hit, right? It's a, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff here going on with the original 1999 film so much that, you know, and you know, this from the trailer, like you, you know, the actual film is playing in some of the scenes in this movie. Um, and it's just like, you know, we it, that wouldn't be such a problem if we haven't seen the original Matrix hundreds of times. Most of us, most of us have seen the original Matrix hundreds of times by now, right? And it's left an impact on us. Like film lovers, people who are into film, you've seen the Matrix hundreds, if not thousands of times. I know I have, right? So to see this movie and see it regurgitating and replaying and reimagining and doing different stuff with the original Matrix, even the lines, I mean, there are lines that are just you know, verbatim that Neo, Mr. Anderson utters uh, and Smith and Morpheus like it's it, it's like a play with the original version and this version. And it just it just seems to be like I I, I don't know. Um, but we did not need to see the same thing again. This is supposed to be new and it, it, it did a very bad job of doing nothing but sticking to the old. The original Matrix 
was groundbreaking. You know, it was fresh at the time. If you're going to do any type of follow up 21 years later, you better bring something new, bring something fresh, bring something innovative, like come up with new things. This simply did not do it. As far as the story goes, as far as the action goes, the action was mediocre at best. I mean, it wasn't anything that you'd you never watched a scene in this movie or a shot in this movie where you felt like, wow, that was like a great shot or the cinematography was fantastic. Or in fact, it's actually, it, it, it actually leaves a lot to be desired. And, and there were some scenes, action scenes, fight sequences where I felt like they were totally shot in a way that where you couldn't tell what was going on. The editing was too fast. Um, you didn't get a sense of what was really happening. You couldn't see anything. So I was like, like, what is going on here? Like, what is happening? I can't see what's going on. And that kind of pissed me off. Instead of doing something new, instead of creating, so you would think, here's the thing, man. I don't want to go on a tangent. I'm trying to stick to these notes, but you would think after 21 years, so, so, the original Matrix was 99, so I'm going off of that. I'm not going off Revolutions, which is a few years later, right? You would think 21 years later that they would come up with some new thing. The Wachowskis, like Lena Wachowski would come up with something totally like, let's let's try to, you know, let's try to break the mold again. Let's try to come up with something fresh again, but they just couldn't. And, and this is just one of those examples where you feel like, all right, you shot your load the first time. Um three times actually first time because again i want to stick with the original matrix being the one that set the tone the other two kind of just whatever you know this is a film that is poking front of itself poking front of the original matrix poking in front of the characters and it's kind of like it's not poking front of them but it's uh at some points i felt like i was watching an snl sketch where they're letting you in on the joke and they are trying to bring you into their world i mean it's just it's it 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 just there it's laughable and it's comedic that's the other thing it's kind of a funny movie which i don't i don't i didn't have an expectation of a matrix movie being funny being a comedy and this you know I, and don't get me wrong i enjoy the laughs here and there and i think every film should have that you have to have these moments of levity and these moments where it's kind of like it, it lightens up the mood a little bit but this goes a little too far so it leaves you with the lack of real drama, real story, and conflict, because I don't know what was really going on. So we end up back with, so let's go into the story. We end up back with Neo, Mr. Anderson, and once again, he's back in the Matrix and can't quite figure out what's going on. Ugh, dude, right? That's what's happening here. Like, he's once again you know, in this situation where he doesn't, I mean, obviously because of the information that we have and we know that he died in, in, in uh, revolutions and we understand that who he is and he was the one and he did this, that and the other, like, so this time he's just placed back in here and we're kind of, we're trying to figure out, I think that the audience is trying to figure out, well, how is he alive? Is he, you know, and then there's points in this where you're thinking, okay, was the whole Matrix series, the, the, the previous films, was it all like part of his mental thing? Was it that? Uh, I think there's a moment where they play with that idea, but it just doesn't conclude. Like it doesn't wrap up. It doesn't get to the point that it should. It feels like it at times. You know, in the beginning of this movie, which again, most of it was regurgitating, replaying, reimagining the original Matrix, all right, the, the, the beginning of this. Then you get to a point where you're kind of, you're, you're along for the ride and you're just waiting and you're thinking it's going to get better and you, you want to see where, where they're going with this. And again, the comedy comes in, the SNL sketch, where it feels like they are toying with the entire franchise and Warner Brothers and the Wachowskis and the whole thing and, 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 and uh, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Moss. Like it all, it all feels like shtick. And then it kind of goes somewhere and you get some answers and you realize blah, blah, blah. But it's essentially the same movie as The Matrix, but not. It's a movie that you're anticipating getting better. You're wanting it to get better. You're wanting it to wrap up in some way. And you think it's going to go really deep when it comes to the actual script and where they go. And it just never gets there. And unfortunately, the action sequences can't keep it alive. So you can't like forgive the script. A lot of situations where you can forgive the script, you can forgive the, the lack of storytelling or the laziness behind that because the action is so good and so riveting or the performances are so off the chain that 
you get past the fact that it's got a little, you know, it's got some flaws when it comes to stories. In this case, go, going into character, there's not even a lot of character in this. The only person memorable in this, you know what? And I feel terrible because I don't even have, I don't even have her name. I should have, let me find out. The, 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 the blue haired girl. Uh, I think her name is Jessica. Here it is. I'm going to find it. Jessica Henwick. The only person in the movie worth watching. First of all, she's absolutely gorgeous. Like every shot of this woman. I don't know how, if it's just her in real. I've never seen her before. Uh, I think she was in one of the Star Wars movies, but this woman is beautiful. And she's the only character that you actually care about. The rest of them, including Morpheus, I don't care about. I just don't care. I mean, I, I like Abdul Mateen II. The second, I like him. Uh, but... I, you, you don't really get behind Morpheus in this movie. And I, there's there's a bunch of stuff. The guy that plays Smith, Jonathan uh, uh, Groff, great actor, plays Smith, but like you're losing Hugo Weaving here. Like you're losing that whole thing. You don't care about any of the crew that's on uh, on what's her name ship, on Jessica Henwick's uh, ship. Bugs is her name. You don't care about the people on the, on the crew. In The Matrix, you really cared about Tank and Switch and all, all of them and Dozer. You know, like you got a sense of their character and Mouse. You know, in this one, the crew is totally expendable. Like you don't care about them. I think the only other person you care about in this movie um, outside of, you know, Neo and Trinity to a point, right? is Neil Patrick Harris, who plays an analyst, right? He plays the, the therapist that's, you know, whatever. Um, but outside of, you know, him, Jessica Henwick, uh, you know, it, you, there's really no one else to care about. There's no one else to get behind. There's no one else you, you, you want to see anything happen with. So, yeah, I'm done. Like, I could go on and on, but the, I, th I feel like I'd just be boring you. But it's just a letdown in those regards. I, again, I don't think it sucked Totally, but it definitely was not a great movie. It didn't live up to expectations. I am curious. Um, I probably, you know, I've said on this channel before, I've had a couple of movies where I saw them the first time and I knew I needed to see them again. Um, and possibly it would change, not change my mind, but it would give me a different perspective. Maybe I missed something. Um, you know, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Tarantino's last film. I, you know, I said that about that. I said that about a couple of films. And this is one of those where, you know, I saw it in a theater. I refuse, obviously, to see it on HBO Max. You know my feelings on that. If you know me and you know my channel, I will not go see a movie. on. I will not see a movie on HBO Max um, first. I saw this in IMAX. I saw it in a theater the right way. But now that I've seen it the right way, I'm probably going to watch it three or four more times on HBO Max at home on my LG OLED um, in surround sound. <laughs> Dolby Atmos. So maybe, you know, I'm putting second viewing. It'll hit me a little, you know, I'll get it a little more. Maybe. I don't know. I I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. I will say that. I think the trailer had me hyped and, uh, Anyway, it's the holiday season. Again, thank you for being with me. If you've, you know, if somehow you made it here and you're like, oh, hey, where's that guy been? I've been out. I've been, I apologize. Uh, it's been rough and uh, I'm back. And for anyone that's new to the channel, you know, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell so you know when I put up new content. I talk about movies. I talk about stuff. I'm trying to work the kinks out. I'm not like, it's not a full time thing for me. So, um, if you like this video, let me know. Hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. It helps out the algorithm. It makes YouTube look at me different if you hit like. Truly appreciate that. If you saw The Matrix already, Resurrections, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the film. You know, if I'm dead, like, wrong, you know, let me know. Give me some perspective on that. Um, if you didn't see it and you plan on seeing it, go ahead, see it, come back. Let me know what you think and we'll get into it. Have a Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Have a Happy New Year if I don't do another video and talk to you by then. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. I'll probably see you in 2022 when I start fresh. And uh, that's it for That Guy Talks Movies. Boom. Peace.